Compact disc, read-only memory. CD-ROMs enjoyed over a decade of widespread popularity from the 1990s to the mid-2000s before being gradually overtaken by DVD-ROMs. And although CDs appear near identical externally to DVDs and even Blu-rays, there's something about the CD that particularly appeals to me, especially when it comes to computer games on compact disc. They use lasers, man! Lasers! It was like science fiction coming to life in the palm of your hand! Early marketing made a big deal about this laser-driven tech, emphasizing not just these speedy access times, but their supposed resistance to smudging, scratches, and breakage. <laughs> yeah. Maybe they were more resistant compared to vinyl records and floppy disks, but anyone who's used CDs for any length of time knows just how easily they can be screwed up beyond usability. Still, there's no understating how it felt seeing the lofty potential brought about by this massive jump in storage capacity and read-write speeds. Out of nowhere, it seemed like anything was possible when it came to programs, games, and multimedia on a computer. It would take about 200 of these file boxes, or about 1,500 floppy disks, to store what you can get on one compact disk. Is it any wonder that optical storage is the talk of the computer industry? I mean, you could store the equivalent of an entire encyclopedia with lots of room to spare with one disc! Pure sorcery! And things like full motion video, voice acting, and massive game worlds went from being ambitious design goals to making good business sense practically overnight. Titles like Myst and The Seventh Guest pushed forward CD-ROM gaming in a big way by 1993, shifting millions of units right alongside the new CD-ROM drives that made them possible. There's 2,500 original 3D wow. rendered graphics. It's a beautiful game. The attention to detail is incredible. Mm -hmm. um, there are sound effects. As you get closer to the water, you hear the water lapping against the dock. Personally, though, even though they were introduced in the latter part of the 80s, I didn't get a CD-ROM drive until 1997, cause money. But I believe my first experience with one was at a library in 1993. They had an Apple Macintosh with a ton of awesome software loaded onto it, one of them being the first CD release of the Oregon Trail. It blew my seven-year-old mind that you could run a game off something so futuristic and shiny. I mean, floppy disks were still my life at home, but CDs, dude. I dreamed of CD-ROMs for years after that, and I actually ended up buying my first CD game before I even had a computer or a drive that could run it. The Need for Speed Special Edition. This is my original disc right here, complete with my name sharpied onto it in case anyone tried to take it from me and pass it off as theirs. I was so excited just to have a CD-ROM in my possession. It didn't matter if I could play it at home or not. I took it to my uncle's house whenever I could and played it on his monster rig and had a blast. Until we upgraded our household PC and it had a CD drive and oh, the excitement! When you upgraded to an optical drive back then, you went from 1.44 megabytes of storage on a floppy to an unthinkable 650 megs in one fell swoop, which was five times larger than my old PC's entire hard drive. They weren't the fastest things at first, and in fact, early disc-based game consoles were notorious for their awful load times from CD compared to cartridges. However, CD-ROM drives on computers could be upgraded, being categorized by transfer speed. They started at 1x, or single speed, and quickly multiplied from there as the years went on, eventually culminating in the ludicrous and short-lived 72-speed drive by 2001. Loading a CD was usually done by placing a disc straight onto a mechanized tray, but some of the early models took an inverted approach to disc acceptance, like this caddy loading CD drive, for example. Unlock it, plop the CD in, and there you go. Capacity varied as well, ranging from 650 megabytes to 900 megs of data storage, with 700 megs being the most common capacity by the late 90s. And naturally, being based on audio compact disc technology, CD-ROMs didn't just store data. They stored dedicated audio tracks as well, also known as Red Book Audio, in reference to the color of the book defining the standard. No more relying on general MIDI or FM synthesis in your PC games. Now you had music that could sound just as good as any album you'd buy at FYE. Unfortunately, as the read-only memory or ROM part of CD-ROM suggests, you could not write your own music or data to them. Well, that finally changed in 1997 with the arrival of CD recordable and CD rewritable drives and special discs to go along with them, of which I was all too happy to upgrade to a few years later. 
It wasn't uncommon to see a disc mix CD audio with data either. So, track one would contain the program, but tracks two and beyond might contain the soundtrack, or even hidden bonus songs to enjoy on a CD player. There were also features built into operating systems like Windows 95 that made using CD-ROM games easier, namely Auto Run. Once enabled, anytime you inserted a CD, you'd be greeted with a splash screen and maybe a little jingle. CDs also allowed for the rise of the demo disc and shovelware compilations. These things existed before this, of course, but it was the CD's beefy storage and zippy access times that helped them flourish. Magazines, retail chains, and mail-order software clubs went all out with packing programs on these things. And shovelware gets a lot of crap, but there was a time when demo discs and shareware compilations were a godsend to gamers like me on a budget. It's for all these reasons and more that I'm still quite fond of CDs and love collecting them complete in their original packaging. And yet, nothing lasts forever. Well, not just in the marketplace, but in terms of physicality as well. While it's been calculated CDs can remain readable for over 700 years, some recent investigations have shown that some discs will barely last 20, 25 years or even less. This is due to the variance used in manufacturing standards and the quality of materials, because while the format itself was standardized, the fabrication process was not. And I've personally started seeing this with some of my retail discs from the late 90s and plenty of my burned CDs from the mid-2000s, which is just a huge bummer. Even if you don't have a desire to go back and load games from CDs again, and I absolutely don't blame you there, I implore you to at least double check your own backups to make sure you haven't lost anything yet. As for me, I plan to enjoy all my discs while I can. They may not be as durable and long-lasting as the marketing promised back in the day, and they've been thankfully replaced by better and more reliable distribution options, but CDs are still plenty enjoyable to play with when you're in the mood, and bring me back to a time when computers were advancing so fast and so awesomely that we didn't know what to do except just enjoy the ride. Well, these were just a few of my memories of CD-ROMs. Feel free to let me know some of yours in the comments, good or bad, and trust me, I know there's a fair amount of bad too. These things weren't 100%. And as always, thank you very much for watching.